Okay, <laughs> welcome to Big Hurricane Baptist Church. We're glad to see you, guests and members alike. We have some missionaries out today, and we will be praying for them as they travel and as they return to us soon. Good to see you here. Now, there are several announcements that I want to get your attention for, but let's first of all see if we have a birthday. Do we have any birthdays? We do. Ashley Rammel, who is not here today. All right, tell Ashley we missed her and we're praying for her. And I know she's taking care of the boys this morning. Okay, good, good. You may also give uh, your tithes and offerings through our uh, the internet connection with the Alabama Baptist. Uh, if you'd like to, certainly the plate is available. Thank you for your faithfulness, especially in this fall season. Um, we're kind of catching back up from our summer absentees, and we are grateful that you are faithful in your giving to the church. Um, immediately following the worship service this morning, we will have a deacon's meeting in the church office, in the pastor's office. So please, guys, come in there just for a minute. We won't hold you long. We will not keep you long. But um, we're grateful for a chance just to prepare you for the business meeting that will happen next Sunday night. Next Sunday night, we will have uh, a business meeting uh, in our regular worship time at 6 o'clock. But Pastor, uh, uh, deacons, we will prepare you for that today. We have several, am I, is this mic on? Can you hear me? Okay. We will have um, several uh, of these handouts there in the back. And uh, some of you have made even some more classic looking handouts. And uh, they are on the internet. They are, uh, some of them are in color. But uh, please help us get the word out for uh, our special fall festival on the 24th. Pastor's Kitchen is bringing a food truck. We will have games and uh, a hayride and things for everybody. We will do it right here in the church parking lot. So please help get the word out. And let others know about this. Our responsibility for Pastor is to do the advertisement. So those of you that are on Facebook, those of you that have connection with any stores that you would like to put this in, it would be wonderful to get that information before the community because the whole community is invited and we are uh, hopeful that everybody will come. Um, today... There will be uh, no choir practice. There will be no choir practice tonight at 4.30. There will be ESL and then our regular evening worship service. Okay? Other announcements? Billy Bosch has some. Sign up sheet for responsibilities for the festival. Yes. Please. Okay, copy what's on Billy's and put on your Facebook page. Okay. Okay, we're ready, whatever you plan to do. An announcement, there it is. Cake walk. Okay. 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 And a little Debbie cake. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Other announcements? Billy. It's years of service. Uh, people don't understand how many hours you do mm. for me to pay. I mean, small. <laughs> no, it's but great pay. We do great appreciate pay. You. Thank you. And we got a little token here that Thank you. I'd like to give you. 
Thank you, this sir. Is from the church. All right. Okay. We also. Thank you. Uh, we don't have the music appreciation day, so I also have something for Stephanie and for John Weir. All right. Here. Very but good. I, you know that I'd like to give them. Well, thank you. This is from the church. Um, we love y'all and appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Billy. Good time. I, I know that Stephanie and John will appreciate you as I do, and I thank you very much for your faithfulness and for your kind recognition today. It is a pleasure to, to be your pastor and to serve with you. I have never been in a finer congregation, and I am honored to serve you as I do. Thank you for this chance. God bless you. Turn in your hymn books to hymn 93. His eye on the sparrow. Hymn 93. And let's sing the first and second verse. to hymn number 65. We declare your majesty. Hymn number 65. And let's sing that twice. Oh, please stand. Oh, 
may be seated to number three, Worthy of Worship, number three. Let's sing all three verses of this one. We may repeat the first chorus, we may keep going, just follow me. Who can fathom the depth of your love? 
All right, children, do we have any children? Okay, none this morning? I think so. I think we're all here today. We'll all stay together. That's good. A lot of sickness, so we're good. All right. Very good. Well, this morning is just one of my favorite topics in the whole Bible. Today, I want you to look with me at Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 7, and you're going to see the same uh, information, the same parable of Jesus, also in Matthew chapter 10, 29 to 31. But let's just look at the Luke passage, and I want you to hear something this morning about fallen sparrows. That means sparrows that have fallen, sparrows that have died, okay? Look at Luke 12, beginning at verse 4. Jesus said, I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more they can do. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who after has, he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are more valuable than many sparrows. May God add his blessing to the reading of his words. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we come this morning as sparrows in need of saving. We thank you that you, our master, our creator and redeemer, have designed us, have made us, and know our every need. We thank you for your grace in filling that need and providing for us a way of hope and salvation. We thank you for sending Jesus to us. We thank you for the clarity and the power of this message he teaches in the scriptures today. We ask that you would help us to apply it, and that you would help us realize that and grasp it for ourselves in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has gone his own way. We have fallen short of the glory of God, would be the way that Paul would say that, to fall short. And I want you to think this morning about sparrows who have fallen. We are sparrows, and we have fallen short but God sees us. God understands us just as he understands the design of the sparrow. In science, we follow this little pugnacious weaver bird. The sparrow is, uh, has been domesticated because of his relationship with man. And everywhere that man has gone, it seemed that sparrows have gone. In 170 years, house sparrows have colonized the globe... And they have uh, gone into every continent except Antarctica. Sparrows were introduced into uh, America and into Australia as insect killers, as uh, destroyers of insects. And they have multiplied so much so now we see them from our perspective as pests by their sheer number. But this bright-eyed cosmopolitan insect eater is known for his short aerobatic flights. He's known in the city as well as the country and his name is adaptability. He can get along just about any place. They are stick nest builders and make a beautiful small nest but they would include any gum wrappers that they can find, strings or horse hair along the way they will lay four to six eggs, and uh, they're going to do that two or three times a year. So you can see the opportunity here for population explosion. They have many names because there are many species, well over 20, but they have names like field sparrow, tree sparrow, house sparrow, white throat sparrow, crown, and savannah. They range from the northernmost tip of Scandinavia 
to the southernmost tip of Patagonia. That's that area down there at the bottom of the globe where Chile and Argentina are. And so on that spectrum, they run from top to bottom. Across six continents, the, the Passer domesticus, the house sparrow, inhabits almost exclusively areas that have been domesticated uh, by human uh, habitations. I have a map for you. Uh, it, it's going to graduate now and show you the growth of the Italian sparrow. From the 1800s all the way to 2019, you can see that this little, the map of distribution of this one species of sparrows. And the sparrows is more widely distributed than any bird in the world. He is a household name and he is able to survive and breed in climates from a desert in Southern California to the above the Arctic Circle. Scientists have followed sparrows and they have watched their growth and they've done many different studies on them. In the news, they're not really a big deal. We don't see a whole lot about sparrows unless they become a problem. And they did in Europe in the 1700s. The local governments in Europe called for extermination of house sparrows and everything associated with agriculture, even all pests, and, and they included in that hamster, so I'm sorry about your hamster pets. But they, they wanted to wipe out the house sparrows in that area. In Russia, they, uh, your rent was determined and your taxes were lowered in proportion to the number of sparrow heads that you turned in. Mao Zedong, the Chinese emperor, uh, declared war on sparrows. He told all of the people in 1958 to come out of their houses at dusk. This is when the birds are going to roost. And to bang pots and pans together to keep them flying in the air. Uh, and they did. They did this. All the people came out all over China and they, you know, made this racket, kept the birds in the air, and many of them died by exhaustion. Some people say a billion birds died as they would not let them roost and they all hit the ground. Um, they were also caught in nets. They were also poisoned. They did many to us very illegal and immoral things to try to kill off the sparrows. What happened was immediately the crops exploded. There was an increase in crop production uh, initially. But over time, the pests that eat the rice, you know how important rice is in China, right? That eat the rice began to multiply. And there was no control over the pests that came in and destroyed the crops and ruined the food sources for China. 35 million people died as a result of starvation in 1958 alone because they killed the sparrows that killed the pests. <clears throat> so they may not be life-changing for you today. Uh, you may not even notice their presence. Uh, they're pretty much uh, underfoot for us, and, and unless they get in our attic, and create a problem of a fire hazard or uh, bring mites, which they can do. If you just leave that sparrow nest there to develop and let them continue to populate your attic. In the grand scheme of things, <clears throat> they don't really change history. They, they really do not make a measurable difference in our lives today. It's important, though, uh, to God. They are important, and their, their importance is reflected in this very passage in what Jesus says as the creator of the world. Their value, though not, is not great in society, their creator finds them considerably valuable. And in contrast, you are measured by the worth of the sparrows. The Lord has something to say about that. Well, this story is, is, uh, has a, a root in, in how much a sparrow costs. Five-eighths of a cent is what a farthing is, just a little over half a cent. Okay, we don't use farthings today. I don't think you're going to be buying your lunch with farthings. 
But that was the biblical term. It's really what uh, King James uses. And it's just think of it as a penny, okay? And so for half a cent, you can get two sparrows. And for two cents, you can get five. This does not work out. <laughs> the math is not great, but you can see that in the transaction here, if you're willing to spend two cents, you can get five sparrows. It's actually like instead of two and two makes four, you're going to get a free one. There's going to be one, one sparrow is going to be thrown in there. There's a free sparrow if you make the deal for four, okay? And the scripture is saying specifically that God sees every one of them. He notices every one of them. Even the free one. There is no such thing as a forgotten sparrow in the kingdom of God. And you do not get lost in the crowd in the mind of God. We do not lose our significance in the fact there are many of us. Jesus died for all but he also died for each. He made us know the value of ourselves by giving himself for every one of us. <clears throat> People just don't use, read the newspaper much anymore. I'm sorry to our newspaper friends. I apologize. But you get most of your news off television or the internet or your phone. But there was a day back when I lived at home years and years ago that my family got its news from the newspaper. And my father had many encounters with the paper boy because the paper was not there when he got up at the crack of dawn. The poor boy had to come by earlier just to throw our paper. And so when, he, when we got up out of bed, Dad was already reading the paper. He was sitting there reading the paper, and it was best not to disturb him. He would, he would listen, he would, take, he would grant you an audience, but you really didn't have a chance to get through because he was reading the paper. He was into it. The Sunday paper was the big one. And in the Sunday paper, I, this is the only one I wanted to see because it had the funnies in it. I get the, I get the comics out, I'd be reading the comics. And Daddy was always interested in what was on the front page. And, uh, you know, he would say, he would ask me, and everyone else, do you, did you get the front page? Who, do, who got the front page? Do you have the front page? Dad, I, I'm just interested in the comics. You know, I'm in the eighth grade. I can barely read. So I was just looking for the comics. That's all. I didn't care about the headlines. I didn't care what was on the front page. I didn't even know where it was. Okay. You may not be on the front page, but you are always in the heart of God. You may not be in the news, but God knows who you are. He knows everything about you, and he loves you, and he cares about you. His desire is to build your life and to make you his. God loves the underdog. He loves the small things. He loves the unnoticed. He pays attention when nobody else pays attention. He cares for the smallest, the unadorned, the helpless, the overlooked, the outcast, and the fallen. What a joy this morning that we take in comparison of his love for the sparrows. Jesus said, take joy, take hope, don't be afraid. God loves you much more than many sparrows. Wow. Sparrows have needs. Now they're just little bitty guys, but they have a need. And the first obvious need that a sparrow has is his nest. This is his niche. Scientists call it his niche. It's a very specific place for him to go, and he needs to have that where there's uh, close by, food is close by, where he is able to get water, and where he's able to find protection. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a sparrow build a nest, but he, you, he does not take long. You are not going to see him except maybe get the last two or three little straws go in there. You might notice that he's pulling some things into the bush. But they will have it done really before you notice it and the, it is there. It's ready. It's his home. It's his place of comfort. Jesus was giving to the disciples 
a, a, a warning. And he would say to them, foxes have their holes and birds of the air have their nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And he was saying to them, if you're going to follow me, you're going to be uprooted out of your home. If you're going to be my disciple, you're going to have to leave behind some of those things that bring you comfort. And you may find yourself away from your protected environment, away and out of your niche. Now this speaks to us as disciples, as followers. We are sometimes drawn out by him into places we would not normally go. And sometimes you feel alone doing that. The psalmist writes a beautiful poem for us in Psalm 102, verse 7. He said, I was alone as a sparrow on a housetop. I was alone. Here he was in his attempt to praise God. Here he was in his desire to be with God. It caused him to be alone. Sometimes the sparrow is out by himself. In Psalm 83, verse 4, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King, my God. God is providing for you a nest. He is making a place for you to do what a bird does in the nest. It is a home. It is a niche. It is a place of peace. It is out of the traffic. He's providing for you a retreat, a protection from the elements. He's providing a place for you to grow and to raise your young. Christina Rossetti wrote a beautiful poem that says, The sparrows of the air of small amount, our God does view whether they fall or mount. He guards us too. The home is a place of production. It is a place that the birds raise their young. It is a place where they learn to fly and they have an instinct to build this nest that they need. Come with me spiritually. You are the sparrows. Where do you think your nest is? Where do you think the nest is that God has given you an instinct to build and to grow? It's your church. God has put in the heart of believers the same desire that the little sparrow has to build his nest. We have a desire for this community of faith to build a place of protection, to build a place out of the traffic, to build a place where we can praise him and worship him and know him, to build a place where we can raise our young, not necessarily just our children, but those that are young in the faith, those that are young in the Lord, God has a place for you in the house of the Lord. God has a place for you just as he has for the swallows under the altar. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Even the forgotten birds have a place in the house of the Lord. And sometimes we feel like forgotten birds. Sometimes we feel like we don't have a place. But in the church is the niche, it is the place, it is the specific place that God has provided for his people. It is the place <clears throat> that you find comfort. If you ever found a little sparrow's nest, you're going to find all those sticks on the outside. You don't know where they got them all and how they got them to weave together. But in the very middle of that is going to be a little bowl of feathers. It's going to be the soft place. It's going to be the comfortable place where the chicks are, where the eggs are laid, and where life happens. God has a place where life can begin, here. God intends for you to have peace and comfort so that you can grow in your faith. And we can bring others to faith in Him. <clears throat> bird, a sparrow needs a song. Actually, they do sing in the rain. Um, long before it was a song and Gene Kelly danced to that, there was a sparrow singing somewhere in the rain. You can't 
Sparrows are the guys that can't wait for the sun to come up. They're always ready and they're always early. How many of you are early birds? All right. I know some of you just can't sleep, but I'm talking about, you know, you get up early though. You're the early bird. You are the sparrow in the group. You're the one that's ready to go. You're ready to start. Every hunter knows how much racket a four-inch bird can make at first light. They are ready and they make a bunch of noise. When the sound is, there's no sound, the first word, bird sounds that you hear are going to be little birds rustling and singing and moving around. I don't know, they, some, they're, look, they're singing a song, they're singing, they're singing a call. They may be looking for a mate or they may just be looking for breakfast. But they're, they're going to be up early. Every time the sun comes up, they're going to be up first and they have a beautiful song. So as we continue to keep this about us and not just the birds, what kind of song do you sing? I'm glad we can appreciate our musicians today. What kind of song does your life sing? I mean when you're out of here, when you're someplace else and you are living your life in the community, what song do people hear you sing? Is it a happy song? Is it a frustrated song? Are you peeved about something all the time or do you praise God with what you have? What song do they hear? Do you sing in harmony with others? Are you with me? You understand this parable? It's very simple. It has to do with how people hear you what you say, what your conversation is about. Maybe you are the one who sings a solo or the monotone. Maybe you're the one who's out there by yourself and you don't sing with anybody. Can it be considered music? The scripture says, out of the mouth, out of the mouth proceeds the abundance of the heart. Whatever you're singing about is coming from within you. Who you are. What are you delivering? Requiems of guilt and doubt? Scores of salvation and hope? Ballads of fatigue and boredom? Or melodies of energy and zest? Symphonies of love? What kind of song do other people hear you sing? This is very important. This is really critical. Because this is about your testimony. The song that you sing says something about what you believe. What other people hear from you. The voice of the sparrow is rich and sweet. He sings because he's happy. He sings because he's free. Do you sing about your freedom? Do you sing about with joy about your life? I always wondered who wrote the verses for sparrows. Who, wrote the, who writes their music? Where did they learn how to get that song? Where did that song come from? We know her as Fanny Crosby, but in eight, between 1820 and 1915, Francis Jane Van Alstine wrote 8,000 hymns. This woman wrote 8,000 hymns, gospel songs. She was such a great writer. She was being interviewed at one time, and they asked her, about her blindness. If you didn't know, Fanny Crosby was blind. She said, if I could have had one wish, because she was blinded by an accident like six weeks after her birth. She said, if I could have one wish, it would be that I was born blind. Then the first face that I would see when I wake up in glory would be the face of my Savior. Now that's a song. That's a song. When you sing, you want to be heard. You like for someone to hear what you have to say. The sparrow wants to be heard in his song. You listen to someone because they are important to you. You listen and you take time to listen to them because what they're saying is of value. It takes more time to hear some people's value than it does others, but we all need to hone and practice the skill of listening because it is an affirmation. It is the highest compliment to someone who is singing, to someone who is trying to tell you something. When we ignore them, we say the opposite. Benjamin Franklin 
was struggling in 1778 along with the Constitutional Convention. They were about to uh, declare failure in their effort to move forward with the, the, the declaration, with the development of the new country that was before them. And Benjamin Franklin, who was a deist, this is interesting coming from a deist, someone who believed that God made the world and then stepped away, lets it run down like a clock. But Benjamin Franklin, after all the turmoil was happening and the Congress was not getting along, stood up and said, if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, an empire cannot rise without his aid. I therefore move that we have morning prayers, imploring heaven. That's not bad. When Jesus was speaking to the disciples in this passage, he is trying to reduce their fears. They had begun to understand that following him could be dangerous. As a matter of fact, it would be life-threatening. And as they followed him, he says to them, don't be afraid. And he gives this little passage. He starts it out, my friends, don't fear those who can kill the body. And that's all. Fear the one who can kill the body and then send you to hell. And so he begins to try to comfort them by showing them the value of the one who really matters. And the one who really matters cares for them in such a way compared to the sparrows as the parable said. Jesus is reducing their fears that their lives would not amount to much or that their death would not mean anything. And he's saying to them their deaths would count, their life would count because of the one who brings value to it. Jesus would say, you've been listening to the enemy. Maybe you feel the same way, that your life is not really counting, that uh, when you're gone from this earth, there really won't be much difference. Nobody will really miss you. Jesus would be saying, you have listened to the devil. Talk to me. I will hear you. I will listen to what you have to say. In verse 32 of this same passage, uh, Luke 12, Jesus says to them, fear not little flock. My father's pleasure is to give, and then he goes on talking about all the things the father will give them. But he says, fear not little flock. I always thought that had to do with sheep. You know, we have so many parables about the shepherds. But I really think Jesus has continued the idea that he began here with just a few little birds who sometimes feel scattered, who feel like they're not much, who don't have much confidence in what they're doing, who are unsure of the value of their lives. And he says to them, do not be afraid. Your father will give to you. Sometimes we are not many. Sometimes we fear we will not be of value. Sometimes we fear that there will be those who take our lives and we will not have mattered for anything. Jesus says to you, fear not, little flock, for you are worth many sparrows. Don't listen to the enemy. I see you, little sparrow. You are important to me. Your value is not placed by the world, but by me. Your pain may not be seen by others, but it's seen by me. He not only knows you, he cares for you. His knowledge and attention are based on his love for you. We are not protected from everything. There is suffering that happens in our life, but we are confident that he is with us in that suffering. We are content that he shares with us and he brings that suffering meaning and purpose. Even in our life losses, those reasons, there's a reason for those losses and our sorrows. With your divine creator, redeemer watching over you, you cannot fail. Like sparrows, we are many. We are diverse. And we are scattered across the earth. Each and every one matters. You may not be front page news, but you are his news. You are important to him and he watches over you. He knows what you need. He knows that you need a nest. He knows that you need a niche and a place.
place. He's providing that. He knows that you need a song. Listen for the song he places in your heart. He knows you need to be heard. And when no one else is listening, when you are alone in the dark place, he hears you. He loves you. He gives to you the song of salvation. He gives to you a home beneath his altar. You have a place in the company and in the property of God. He gives you joy that every song you sing is heard by him. Even if you are the extra sparrow, even if you are the free one, he loves you and he knows you. He wants you to be his. You pray with me. Our Father, we come this morning with great joy in our hearts because of your ability to know us and care for us and give to us the things that we need. We appreciate and we desire your recognition and your faithful attention to our lives. We ask that you would continue to use us and bless this church. We ask, Father, that you would hear our voice today and help us with our song, that it would be a song of salvation, a great song of joy of all that you've given to us. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen.